in this part we will specifically concentrate on the bones of our wrist and our hand so at the wrist and palm we observe specific number of bones which are arranged in a specific manner which help us carry out complex work such as typing something on the computer so the carpals or wrist bone are eight in number joined to one another by ligaments the carpals are arranged in two rows with four bones in each row so yes we have the carpals which are arranged in two rows total number of bones become eight and they are definitely joined with one another by ligaments which you can observe here on the diagram given on the screen so these are the carpal bones present in us the scaphoid leunate the tricutrum the pz form the trapezium the trapezoid capitate and definitely the hamate these are the eight carpal bones as we have already discussed these are arranged in two rows the carpals are arranged in two rows and definitely they are joined by help of ligaments the metacarpals are five in number and phalanges are 14 so after the carpals we have metacarpals towards the end of our forearm and definitely the 14 phalanges are arranged thereafter so we have the carpals here which are exclusively present in the wrist thereafter we have the metacarpals and from which fingers originate so the phalanges basically constitute our finger and definitely we can see that the palm is given power given protection by the metacarpal the shape of palm is maintained because of metacarpal they are also helpful for holding the phalanges at their place the phalangeal formula becomes two double three double three so yes for our thumb we have got only two phalanges whereas for the rest of the fingers we have got three three phalanges each they're arranged in three different rows namely the proximal phalanges which are closer to the metacarpal thereafter we have the intermediate phalanges which are just in between the proximal and the end or distal phalanges and at the end definitely we have distal phalanges at the tip of our finger the bones of upper arm of man are the humerus one bone radius plus ulna two bones the carpals eight bone metacarpals five bone and definitely phalanges 14 bones so as a whole total 30 bones are present in each of our forelimb one is present here two are present here thereafter eight are present in this particular area five metacarpals here and finally the phalanges on each of our fingers total we are getting 30 bones one here two at that particular side eight here five here and 14 phalanges so the total number of bones present on our four limbs become 60 because we have two four limbs on the two lateral sides of our body let's now talk about the bones of the hind limbs they are the posterior bones or the legs of us on which we can balance our entire body mass so definitely the bones are supposed to be larger the bones are going to be more powerful and the phalanges are definitely going to be shorter as the digits of our limbs are shorter than the digits of our arm 
let's continue to understand more so we have the femur or thigh bone which is the largest and strongest bone of our body the fovea capitis is a depression of head of femur so the head of femur we have a depression fovea capitis this is a distinct depression and this help us in recognizing the femur bone moreover it structurally quite similar to that of humerus the femur is known as bone of thigh yes we know that the great trochanter lesser trochanter third trochanter are present in femur of thigh and buttock muscles so yes we can observe here the greater trochanter there are other trochanters also which are the bulging structures the patellar groove is found in distal end of femur so when we observe the distal end of femur we can find the patellar groove on femur which is definitely a characteristic of this bone presence of patellar groove the patella forms knee cap yes we can see here the knee cap is being formed by patella the patella is formed by sesamoid bone the fabella is also example of sesamoid bone all right so here we can see the new capsule here we have the fabella and definitely there are muscles there are ligaments and so on which make up our knee as a whole it is very important for as we can bend our knee and that help in locomotion to a great extent the tibia is larger also called the shin bone and it bears weight of the body to a great extent so here we can observe the tibia and there is a very thin bone fibula the ratio of the two bones become approximately 90 is to 10 so definitely tibia is the thicker bone whereas fibula is very narrow we are now talking about the bones of the hind limb which are bones of our legs the fibula is smaller and associated with the knee joint it is definitely a long bone but it is a weaker bone as compared to that of tibia for us the ratio comes down at 90 is to 10 so almost the entire body mass is supposed to be borne on the tibia and not on the fibula thereafter we have the tarsal bones which are 7 and metatarsals which are 5 this is very clear from you to understand on the image just on the forelimb we have carpals and metacarpals at the hind limbs we have tarsals and metatarsals thereafter we have the phalanges which are also 14 in number and the pattern is quite similar to that of our forelimb the ankle bones have seven tarsals and are arranged in two rows so let's now count the number of bones present in hind limb we have one bone that is the femur patella is one bone tibia and fibula two bones seven tarsals five metatarsals and 14 phalanges total we are getting 30 bones so similar to the forelimb the hind limb also has got 30 bones each